In this video, I will teach you the Microsoft PowerPoint Design tab and ribbon in depth. And this is one in a series of videos in which we're going through all of the typical PowerPoint tabs and ribbons. Let's get started. So this particular video on the Design tab and ribbon is probably going to be a little shorter than some of the other videos. Why? Well, there's just not a lot on the Design tab. We do have a themes group with some interesting and powerful themes to choose from. We've got the variance group, the customized group, and we have designer. So we'll take a look at those starting with the themes group. So I've already applied a theme to this slideshow and that's why it's highlighted here. But I could certainly switch to a different theme. And themes are great because they can quickly give your slides a unified look and feel. If I switch, for example, to this theme, all of my slides are updated. They all now have these beautiful green colors. The text has also changed. In some cases, the fonts have changed, but certainly the colors. If I switch to a different theme, again, the color schemes change, the fonts, the way visuals are handled is changed just a bit. Now, if you look through these themes and you're not interested in any of them, make sure you also click this button here. It will bring up all of the possible options that you have. You can also browse for themes and by clicking there you can search your computer for themes that you may have downloaded from the internet. For example, maybe from this website, slidescarnival.com, but there are many other websites out there where you can get pre-made PowerPoint templates that you can use as themes. So for example, if I like this template, I can just download it and there's a button here to learn how to export from Canva to PowerPoint and very quickly I'll have this look and feel as a theme that I can use in my PowerPoint slideshows. I'm going to switch back to this purple theme. I kind of like that. But of course, because of the change in theme, I'm going to want to maybe move some of my visuals to make sure that they're visible and look their best. Now, once you've selected a theme, notice that there are variants that you can look through. And again, we can click this button here to see all of the variants in one view. So I can switch just the color. Everything else will stay the same. It's still the same theme. It's just that the colors have been adjusted. In addition to choosing a different variant, you can also switch to even more color schemes. Those are all listed here. You can choose to keep the theme and the variant that you've chosen, but just to change the fonts a bit. Maybe I prefer Arial, or maybe I prefer Kendara. So that's where you can make those subtle changes that can really make a big difference in the experience of the people watching your slideshow. You can also adjust how certain effects are displayed on your slides, and you can change your background styles. You can see how those are affected just by putting your mouse over one of these options. It gives you a preview of what it would look like. Okay, so that's themes and variants. That takes up the majority of the ribbon, but those are the options that you're probably going to use most often on the design ribbon. Let's move over here now to the customize group. We have slide size and format background. Slide size lets you change the format of your slideshow. Right now it's widescreen format, which I think is perfect for most of the ways I use PowerPoint, but I guess an older style is standard. In my opinion, this should no longer be called standard. This used to be standard maybe 12 years ago, but in the 2020s, I think that widescreen is actually more standard than standard is. So I'm going to switch back to widescreen. You should also know that you can set up custom slide sizes. And this is fantastic for monitors or TVs that are set to portrait mode instead of landscape mode. So I can switch to portrait. I can be very specific if I want to about the exact width and height and then just click OK. And I'm going to ensure that my content fits onto these new slide sizes. But take a look at that. My slides now are in portrait mode. These would work well if the viewers are using a smartphone and they're too busy to flip their phone to landscape instead of portrait. And then also I've seen in many businesses and especially at universities and in other schools, I've seen TVs or monitors set up in portrait orientation with PowerPoint slideshows that play and loop. And this is a great way to make that happen. So definitely try and play around with the custom sizes and the two standard options. I think, like I said before, that widescreen should be considered standard, but all of these options can be very useful as you work in PowerPoint. 
Okay, next up, we have Format Background. And here we have several background options. We can format the background in various ways. If you choose Solid Fill, you can then choose a single color for the background. So maybe I want orange for the background. I click Apply to All, and it looks like nothing happened. But if you click Hide Background Graphics, you can see what's going on. Those background graphics were covering up the changes I was making. So now that I've hidden the background graphics, you can see that I can choose specific single colors that I can apply to the background. So that's solid fill. What about gradient? With gradient, you can choose multiple colors. So mine starts with white and it goes toward this pink, purple color, but I can change the gradient stops along the way. Click apply to all. Again, in order to actually see this, I need to hide the background graphics, but now you can see the gradient from white to pinkish purple. It looks pretty nice. Let's move on to picture or texture fill. With this option, we can insert a picture or just use a texture that comes with PowerPoint and use that as the background. You can see here I could insert my own picture, but I'm just gonna click through here to choose a specific texture that I want to use. I can set its transparency level. If I want to, I can offset it a little bit, you know, scoot it to the right, left, up, down. I can scale it up or down, align it, or even mirror it just to change up the pattern of the texture. Another option we have is pattern fill. And you can see what that does. It just takes whatever the color is that you've chosen and then lets you put dots in that color or squares, bigger squares, stripes. To be honest, most of these kind of hurt my eyes and are not that attractive or pleasant for me. So I usually don't use pattern fill, but there are situations perhaps in which that would be very useful. Once you've made your changes, if you want to apply them to all of the slides you can. You can also reset the background to the previous way that you used to have it. I'm just going to unhide the background graphics to get back to the theme and variant that I had selected earlier. But these customize options are really quite good. You can change the slide sizes and formats, and you can format the slide's background. All right, this final tool and group that we have on the Design tab and Ribbon is called Designer. And not all versions of PowerPoint have this, but if yours is a newer version or if it's a Microsoft 365 version of PowerPoint, you should have this. And what this does is this uses some, I guess you could call it artificial intelligence to basically give suggestions for the look and feel of your slideshow. And I can just click through these to apply them to my PowerPoint presentation. If I click on this slide here, Designer gives me some suggestions there. Do I want the car to be kind of faded in the background of this slide and then I can put my text on top of it? I think that looks great, but in my case, I do think I want the car to be more visible. It's an important element of this slide. But I love this, that I can just click through and try different layouts, different designs that I would have never thought of. I probably never would have created this on my own, and yet I love how it looks, and this might be the one that I stick with because it looks so good to me. If you want even more ideas, you can click here to see more design choices and choose the one that you like best. So if you have access to Designer, I highly recommend it as a way to kind of think outside the box. You do the best you can in designing your slide. You know, this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. But turn on Designer and see what Designer can do with it. That looks fabulous. This looks great. And in the end, you'll end up with perhaps an even better look and feel for your slide. So that is the in-depth review of the Microsoft PowerPoint design tab and the ribbon that comes up when you click on design. Please do check out the other videos in this series. You'll learn about the home tab and ribbon, the powerful insert tab and ribbon, and eventually I will get to all of the default Microsoft PowerPoint tabs and ribbons. In the meantime, Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. I want to ask you to consider supporting the channel so I can continue to make these videos. The best way to do that is to become a channel member. 
you'll get some special perks, but you could also click the thanks button below the video to support me. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of supporting the channel, I want to say thank you to my fantastic Super Techie channel supporters. Thank you so much for what you do to support the channel. I really appreciate you.